Well, the reaction to my book review of Samantha Markle's The Diary of Princess Pushy's Sister Part 1. And I was really so excited to read all your comments. They were so good and so informative. And there was lots of different opinions and questions, which I'm going to answer in this video, and also some disagreements with me, which is fine. And I just loved reading all of it. Thank you so much. Now, if you haven't seen that video and seen part one, I suggest you just go off and see it and then this one will make more sense. Okay, so first off, kick off with a correction. In the first video, I said that uh, Samantha rang Megan and asked her to financially contribute to their father's well-being when she was on Suits. It wasn't. I was thinking it was the pilot version of Suits before Trevor and Megan got married. It wasn't. It was when she was on Deal or No Deal and Samantha made this call. Now, I don't disagree with Samantha making that call. I was so amazed that people had that take on it from me. What I was saying was I was just saying it could be handled a little more diplomatically. That's all I was saying. And I could understand uh, Megan's quite defensive reaction because they hadn't had much contact prior to that, like not hardly any. And all of a sudden, the older sister's calling and saying, you should financially contribute to our father's well-being. And I uh, probably, if Megan wasn't a raging narcissist, <laughs> you would feel shame. I mean, if my sister rang and said that to me, I would feel ashamed that I should have thought of it myself. You get what I mean? So I was just saying I could understand that she was defensive if she was. And I was just saying could have been handled more diplomatically. That's all I was saying. <laughs> okay, so calm down. <laughs> anyway, now I'm going to answer some questions. People said, um, about Doria. Did Samantha mention about Doria not being around? And she didn't. She only did one sentence in chapter 23, which I'm going to read to you. But she said basically when they divorced that it was half in Thomas's house and half in Doria's house. And then as it got through middle school into high school, it became less and less and less. And then when she was in high school, she was predominantly at her father's. That's how she sort of told the story. But she did say in chapter 23, I'm going to quote one short little sentence. I never saw Doria come over to dad's place. I wondered if she went away somewhere. So that's all she says. She doesn't expand on it. She doesn't say anything. And so we still don't know. The other thing is people said to me, well, Tom Bauer's book said this, and they were trying to point me to information I should know. I know all the information that you're saying. But when I was reviewing this book, I had to say and review what Samantha wrote. I had to go from her written words. I can't very well say, well, Tom Bauer said this and another YouTuber said this. And since then, we've discovered this. And it's of our opinion as a community that we think this. <laughs> I've got to just go on what is actually written by Samantha. And so that was what I was commenting on. And that is what I was actually reacting to. So people also asked about the Doria photos and they said, well, weren't they all up on the wall? And I thought, oh, gosh, <laughs> I don't think so. But Samantha, there was one up on the wall and it was a tasteful nude. This is in Samantha. I'm telling you what Samantha's saying. It was a tasteful nude that her father took and it was proud of and Doria looked beautiful and it was very tasteful. This is in Samantha's words. And it was pride of place up on the wall. Now, Samantha says that when everyone went out, she went and found the other photographs that were a little more confronting. I get the impression from what she says. And they disturbed her so much that she really wanted to tell her father about them. But that's all she says. She doesn't go into much more detail than that. There was also some confusion over the timeline because people were saying to me, well, you know, Samantha did that interview because the family didn't receive any support and they weren't helped and they were attacked by the paparazzi and all that. That's the point I was making. When Samantha did the Princess Pushy interview, and I'll say more about that in a sec, Thomas Markle Sr. was not being harassed by the paparazzi. 
No one knew where he was. He was not being harassed. No one even knew about Samantha Markle. No one even knew about Thomas Markle Jr. This was right back at the very start when the tabloids first got on to the fact that Harry and Meghan were an item. That they, it was announced that they were girlfriend and boyfriend. They weren't engaged yet. That was the very first outreach from a journalist. Now, I know that because Samantha says it in her book. And Samantha also says that a few days before that, that her dad had rang and said that he'd heard from Meg and that it was all, you know, going down and that Meg asked for all family not to talk to anyone and that she, they, they'll get onto it when they see it sort of heating up or popping up, they'll get onto it and help is on its way, more or less. So just lay low. But before that could even happen, Samantha did this interview. And then the headlines were, Princess Pushy and the Queen would be appalled. So this interview wasn't Samantha defending her family. It wasn't her answering accusations that had been made against her or her family. Nothing had been said about the Markles at this stage. And it was after this interview that Samantha says that Thomas Markle Jr. made sure that a paparazzi pack got their father's address after the Princess Pushy interview. And then it all went down. And then Samantha says that she organised for uh, the, you know, the, the fake paparazzi photos to make her dad look better. She says she organised that. Now, I know that all over the internet and everything, everyone was saying there was a rumour that Megan organised that. And I, I bought into that one too. But I'm just telling you what she said in her book. And in her book, she said she organised it. She regretted it because it all went horribly. So I wasn't judging Thomas Markle Sr. for doing that at all. I've made videos defending him for doing that. I've made videos saying he didn't get enough help and that I understood that he wanted some nice complimentary photographs out there. I've been his one of his biggest supporters on that. But it was Samantha that organised that. She said she used to go out with a paparazzi photographer. I mean, you've got to understand that Samantha knows show business. She was a radio announcer. She was on a TV show called Matlock. She'd done modelling. Um, she says in her book she went out with a pap. Um, she's not naive. She knows show business. She grew up in it. So when people are saying, well, surely she can say interviews and defend herself, of course she can. And after Finding Freedom and Oprah Winfrey and the docuseries, I think she has every right to do just that. But what I was talking about was an interview two or three years before all that went down. Now, also people ask me about Samantha's kids and this sort of indicated to me that she's actually a very brave person. She got pregnant and the, her and her boyfriend had actually broken up and she decided to keep the baby. And um, she was encouraged by a grandmother to actually have an abortion and she didn't. And she went off and she got herself a job in a radio station and she saw through a whole pregnancy on her own and she had the baby on her own. And it was only after that point that she actually moved back closer to her family. So all credit to her. I mean, that's incredibly brave. Now, she rekindled the romance with the father of her first baby and they ended up getting married and they ended up having another baby. And you can tell that that marriage ended unhappily. And Samantha and her husband made the decision that the two children would be brought up with uh, his mother and father. So the paternal grandparents took those two children and they were off living in Virginia in a nice house, went to good schools and they were stable and happy. And that was the decision because the parents, which were Samantha and her then husband, ex-husband, uh, weren't established enough to have the kids. 
So that also heralded the start of a very successful period for Samantha. She was modeling, she was working in a cosmetics counter at a top department store, and she also got a really good part in the TV series Matlock, and she was earning really good money. But she said she made the decision not to bring her children back to live with her because although she was earning really good money, she wasn't earning enough to buy a home and she didn't think it was fair to uproot her children if she didn't have enough money to buy a home. That is what she says in the book. So that'll answer you about that. As far as her third child, um, who I think is called Noel, um, she was brought up by Samantha all through toddlerhood and, well, right up until they had a falling out when she was a teen. And Samantha was at that point too when her third child was living with her that she went back and completed her education. So that's all I know about Samantha's children from her book. So it all comes down to timeline and it makes you wonder whether um, I have to tell you about the Princess Pushy interview in more detail because I don't think I gave you enough detail in the first video. Samantha said that a journalist rang her and was asking her if her sister was pushy. Now, Samantha says that she just kept talking to him in general terms about how ambition can be seen as being pushy. And she said that she was trying to get across that her sister was a go-getter. So she said that it was all taken out of context. Now, as far as the queen being appalled, she said that she coached her then boyfriend in British dialects. I, I, I don't know why. And um, the journalist said, well, what do you think the queen would think of Meghan? And the boyfriend yelled out in the back of the call, the queen would be appalled in a British accent. Now, Obviously, it was meant as a joke, but it ended up a headline. And Samantha, in her own book, says when she's expressing regret over this, that she imagined that Meg would have thought that she was betraying her, that she'd said awful things about her in a newspaper interview, because the headlines were Princess Pushy, Queen would be appalled, and it went worldwide. And so... It was at that point that Meghan and Harry closed down, pulled up the moat, shut off, closed down and had nothing more to do with Samantha and Thomas Markle Jr. They were still communicating with Thomas Markle Sr. And again, I agree, I don't think they gave him enough support. And then Samantha says in her book, that she was scrambling and things were going from bad to worse because she was trying to fix it. Now, I left out in my first video a bit. I cut it out because I thought it would be misinterpreted. But now I've explained about Samantha's regret over that interview. I think you'll understand why I say this. With the amount of regret that she had, I don't understand why she agreed to call her book The Diary of Princess Pushy's Sister because it's so inflammatory and she makes such a big deal out of regretting that whole interview and how it sort of was the start of everything going pear-shaped. And in the book, it only takes up a few pages. So I heard that she was going to rename her book A Tale of Two Sisters and that would have been better. It's not as clickbaity. It wouldn't have done sales as well as this title, but it's a more honest title because it is a tale of two sisters. And it's interesting, isn't it, that when I reacted that I could see shades of grey in this, that I could see, you know, I am never of the opinion that anyone is 100% right or anyone is 100% wrong. I think I've lived long enough to see nuance and there's grey areas and that's part of being human. So when I was reacting to the parts or the grey areas or the nuances of Samantha in her own words and where I thought bits didn't gel or bits didn't add up or her explanations seemed a bit, you know, I wasn't totally convinced, I was just being honest that that was my reaction because I can never, ever approach anything with blinkers 
and have one view and make what I read fit the view I want. I always read things as are on the page and then I take notice of my initial reaction. And sometimes you read things that you don't like and sometimes you read things that don't fit the narrative you want. Uh, But whenever I review a book, I'm always honest what my reaction was. And I hope you enjoyed this and I hope to see you again very soon. If you want to buy Samantha Markle's book, I suggest you do. It is available on Amazon. You have to buy the hardcover version of the book. You can't get it on Kindle or anything. Um, So I encourage you to because it's so interesting because it gives you a timeline. It gives you a way to see how what a disaster that initial few weeks were for everyone concerned and how if it hadn't have played out that way, then things might have been really different and it might have been a lot different for two very damaged and hurt families. I'll see you again very soon. Bye.